Uh, so one aspect of your practice is helping people improve and optimize hormone balance. And that can be another big, big topic, and yeah. we could probably do multiple episodes <laughs> Nine, ten, yeah. just, just on that. So we'll, we'll keep this yeah. part like, you know, a little bit probably more high level and, and brief, but with kind of one specific lens on this yep. part, and that's stress management. The whole world is stressed out, mm -hmm. probably more than, than ever. I, my personal stress level is probably some of the highest that it's ever been right now as we're trying to, you know, claw back from the pandemic and the shutdowns and stuff like that. And I know I'm, I'm far from the only one that is feeling <laughs> a lot of stress these days. So what advice can you offer uh, to people that are feeling stressed out, that want to manage that better, and obviously tie in a little bit about how that affects hormones and how yeah. hormones affect the whole big picture? Yeah and you're, you're hit the nail on the head with hormones affecting the whole big picture. And um, I often talk about that for my patients from the broad perspective is we get your hormones in balance, we usually fix a lot of your health. Yeah. Um, people come in with the idea that hormones a lot of times means thyroid hormone. Yeah. That's a big topic. And I, if I got a dollar every time someone said fix my thyroid, I'll be like retired at you know, 38. <laughs> but um, it's really about the whole orchestration of hormones. Um, and really the big one is cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Mm -hmm. And balancing cortisol is like paramount to fixing systemic ailments in the body, chronic illness, and balancing the other hormones that come with it. Yeah. So the one thing I usually give my patients or the one, two, two things I'll start with is sleep. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not sleeping, you're sucking at everything else in life. Yeah. Your strength training, your eating, um, your work performance, and it's not about just giving someone a prescription for a sleep bed. I certainly will at certain times, but we in our go, go, go culture and, and, and days that we have, like, like you and I both know, sleep just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like we go, go, go and look at blue light screens all day long and our yeah. phones and our workouts and our work. And then we just expect to fall into bed and get a restful night of sleep. Like right. I remind my patients, we have to set up sleep from the time we wake up. Good light exposure in the morning, limiting our caffeine, eliminating it if you're really having a problem, blood sugar balance with food, a sleep routine that's optimal, mm -hmm. and shutting down our screens a little bit, maybe taking some supplements. But if we can't sleep, you're, you're not going to do it. Yeah. So that's usually where I start first because everyone wants, what's the adaptogen I can take? What's the supplement I can take? Sure. And I'm like, where's, the, where's your bed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's big. I, I know personally I've made some changes to help my sleep in the past couple of years that uh, I've noticed a huge difference yeah. on. One of, the, one of the big ones that I, I've, I do, and this was hard at first, and I bet if you're listening to this, you're going to be like, how in the world <laughs> is that even possible? And now I don't think I could like, live without it is when I get home from work, my phone goes away and it does not come back out Good. until the next morning. Good. Um, and so I get, you know, it's usually about two hours or so uh, by the time I get home before it's bedtime mm -hmm. for, for me because I usually work till, I'm usually here at the gym till eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so I get home, phone goes away and it doesn't come out yeah. until, um, you know, about after I've at least been up for 15 or 20 minutes in the morning. A lot of people, it's, it comes into the bedroom with them. They're all maybe mm -hmm. in bed, flipping through their phone, and you know they it, first thing they do when they get up is they grab their phone as their very first thing. So I uh, I bought an alarm clock. It's actually one of those like sunrise alarm clocks, oh, yeah. so it kind of lights, lights up a little bit. Um, so I, I use one of those, and I bought actually a watch that has yeah. a, a vibrating alarm. So I get up about an hour before Mira, yeah. so this vibrates, so it won't disturb her, and I just get up. And uh, yeah, I've noticed an immense difference yeah. in, in my sleep quality by yeah. just getting rid of the yeah. getting rid of the phone. Well, on the phone, the blue light—if you don't have blue light, or blue light blockers on—the yeah. blue light is actually going to raise your cortisol levels a little bit too. Yeah. So that's going to suppress melatonin, and melatonin is obviously so crucial to getting restful sleep and deep sleep. Yeah. Um, and I've encouraged my patients not only something like you're saying, but I'll tell them if you are on social media, let's start to like delete some certain types of apps mm -hmm. and really pay attention to who you're following. Yeah. If you're following for no reason at all, there's no education or joy behind it start deleting them yeah. and be a big fix. Yeah, that was another actually good one that I did is I, uh, if it weren't for us having the gym, I don't know that I would even have social media at all, <laughs> but we have a gym and we have a business, so I've yeah. got to have some accounts. Uh, but the only one I have on my phone is Instagram. And that's yeah. primarily because the, the the laptop or the, the browser platform kind of sucks sure. on, on Instagram and they really want it to be on the phone. But on anything else that we have, I don't have it on my phone. And that way, like once I shut my computer, mm -hmm. there's just no access to even yeah. doing it at all. And that's yeah. been a big help for me too. Yeah. So sleep's number one for me with patients. And then, you know, 
we probably don't have time to talk about it. Like we said, we could talk about it all day, but yeah. probably alcohol and blood sugar regulation. Yeah. Number two to reduce that stress level. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're out there and you want to reduce the stress level and you have yep. one thing, start with sleep, sleep hygiene. <laughs> sleep so, hygiene. Um, if somebody wants to learn a little bit more about that, do you have any resources that are available? With sleep? Yeah. Um, whew, I mean, honestly, Persistent Nutrition pumps out a lot of great articles. Um, okay. If you Google like sleep optimization off like Precision Nutrition, mm -hmm. um, which is an organization that I love, like you said, mm -hmm. there's a, they do a lot of different infographics on sleep. Yeah. Um, which can be really helpful for setting up a great sleep hygiene routine. Yeah, that's one of the things I think they're fantastic about too is taking what could be really complicated information mm -hmm. and boiling it down into a very easy to understand infographic that you yeah. can skim through in a few that. seconds. Yep. They're, they're really excellent. When they're behavior sort of focused. They're yeah. not like eat this food and eat this food. Well, what yeah. if I don't like apples and what if I don't yeah. like this for sleep? Yeah. It's about behaviors because that's actually what really drives our health changes, our behaviors. Yeah. So we could probably.